sources of errors and precaution. So namely, there are four types. Your mechanics, meaning your forces, and then our moment. Next, thermal physics, light and electricity and magnetism. So let's look at the first one. Okay, so these are the list. Uh, this is the list of the errors that is possible for mechanics. So for example, uh, measuring dimension of an object. So let's say if the object that you're trying to measure is not uniform, for example, like a wire or a spear or a rod, an iron rod. Okay, so what's the precaution? You should take multiple reading at different location and then take the average value. And then of course, you can also mention take reading vertically to prevent parallax error. Okay, but ideally you should mention the first one. Okay, uh, try not to give the generic one unless you really can't think of a better sources of error. Next one, stopwatch. Okay, so whenever you use a stopwatch, you should have the experience. Is sometimes what like no clear signal to start or stop the stopwatch. Okay, or human reaction time. So for this error, what can you do? Introduce a better indicator. Okay, start the stopwatch when the pendulum is at its extreme end of the swing. Okay, because when it's at the extreme end of the swing, right, the speed will be the slowest, so it's easier for you to identify. Or for human reaction time. Modify the experiment so that a longer duration is recorded. For example, take the time for what? 20 oscillation instead of 1 oscillation. Okay, then you can take the average. Next one, oscillating object. So what if there's a wind blowing? Okay, this might be a source of error. So you can close the window and switch off the fan. I'm sure you have this experience before when you do the experiment in your school lab. Or the next one, the oscillating motion is not steady. Okay, so meaning when you release the pendulum, right? Uh, initially the the swinging motion is not steady. Okay, so you should what? only start the stopwatch when the swinging motion is steady, or you can ensure the hole made for the pivot is small. Okay, so the needle passing through the hole, make sure it's uh small and not too big for the uh needle to pass through. Okay, if not, the swinging motion might be irregular if the hole is too big for the needle. And then of course, reduce the amplitude of oscillation. Amplitude basically means the angle where you displace the pendulum and release. Okay, do not um display it by uh too large of an angle, then you release. Maybe about ten degrees. Okay, should be good enough. Okay, then next one when you try to balance object at pivot. So this one usually is for moment experiment. So what's the error? Pivot may not be placed exactly at the CG center of gravity. So how do you ensure? Uh, this error is being eliminated. Okay, so the precaution ensure the height of both ends of the meter rule from the bench top are equal. So basically, you put a pivot at the 50 cm mark. So from the 0 cm mark to the table, you can measure what's the height. And then from 100 cm mark to the table, you can measure what's the height. Try to make sure that both height are about the same. So if they are, they are about the same, means your meter rule will be horizontal. Okay, or of course, you can close the window or switch off the fan. Because when the wind is blowing, it might um, cause your meter rule to oscillate about the pivot. Okay, so just memorize this one before you go for your exam. So because uh, usually at the last part of the experiment, they will ask you what are the sources of error and how you uh, do your precaution. Okay, next one, thermal physics. So once in a while you might get it, but not that often actually. But just go through a fast one. Measuring of uh, temperature using thermometer. So sometimes when you measure a uh, thermometer reading, even for chemistry at practical, okay, the temperature reading might be fluctuating. Okay. So what are the precautions? So you have a few here. First one, take the temperature reading only after the temperature remains relatively constant. Okay. So once it's stabilized, then you take the reading. That will be the accurate reading. Okay. Uh, next one, the thermometer should not be touching the side of the container. Okay. So you don't want any heat loss to the surrounding or to the container. This one is very important. The bulk of the thermometer must be fully submerged into the solution. Bulk basically means the lowest part of the thermometer. So it must be fully covered by the solution. Okay. So you can measure the temperature of the solution accurately. Or uh, this one, the typical, the generic one. Read the thermometer reading at uh, the same level to prevent parallax error. Okay. So this one you learn in sec one and sec two. And then this one, of course, do not stir the solution with a thermometer. Instead, use a glass rod. Because when you stir it with your thermometer, right, there might be friction, then it might cause the thermometer to measure a higher temperature than the expected one. Okay? Next one. So when you try to transfer object from the source to the, ob uh, to the object, okay, so there might be heat loss to the surrounding or heat loss to the container. 
Okay, so ideally you should insulate the solution in a styrofoam cup. Means you pour the solution in a styrofoam cup and then place it in the pickle. Uh, I think this one, uh, most students have tried it before in your chemistry, maybe. Okay, so these two are for your uh, thermal physics. Next one. For light, okay, light is quite common, okay. So whenever you use glass block, okay, the glass block might shift from the original position during experiment. So usually your uh experiment they ask you to trace out the position of the glass block on the piece of paper. So sometimes when you do the experiment, the glass block might shift. So you can use what blue tag to secure the glass block onto the paper, okay. So to prevent it from shifting, because once you shift the glass block, it's very hard for you. Sometimes it might be a bit troublesome for you to put back into the exact location okay so next one when you use op uh, optical pins means the, the the pins to align them so this one the error size of the holes created by the optical pins are too large after repeated piercing through okay so ideally place the optical pin far apart from each other or try to pin it at a new location but most important it must still be far apart from each other okay so that the accuracy will be higher okay or sometimes difficult to determine the alignment of the optical pins accurately. So to do this right, uh, you should place the optical pin far apart of each other, at least 5 cm apart. And then if you have tried this experiment before, sometimes the pin when you insert to the softboard, right, it might be a bit slanted. So ideally, if possible, you should use what? A set square to ensure the optical pins are perpendicular to the paper. Okay. So maybe initially when you pin it, it's a bit slanted. Then you try to see it from the eye level. Okay. Then if you realize it's a bit slanted the pin, so you can use a set square, place it on the softboard, and then you pull out the pin and uh, pierce it through again. In this case, uh, perpendicularly. Okay. Next one. So use of mirror. So quite common also. So the mirror might shift from the original position, very similar to the glass block. So you can use blue tag to secure the mirror, and then most important is what. So if you are observant enough, uh, the mirror. Okay. There's one face of the mirror is actually the silver surface. That is your reflective surface. Okay, so this reflective surface should be placed on the line that is drawn to reflect uh, to represent the reflecting surface. Okay, not the front of the mirror, but the reflective surface of the mirror should be on the line. Okay, so this one try to take note very important because sometimes your mirror will have some thickness. Okay, so do not align it to the front of the mirror. Align it to the silver surface of the mirror on the line. Very important design, okay. And then of course, uh, once in a while you might use converging lens, okay. So you put it on your uh, lens holder. So difficult to determine the sharpness of the image accurately. So usually for this type of experiment, you need to shift your lens uh, backward and forward until you see a sharp image on your screen. So to solve this issue, right, you can dim the surrounding uh, brightness, okay. So usually you switch off the light in the in the laboratory, okay. Or difficult to determine the distance. From the center of the lens to the screen accurately okay so you're trying to measure the image distance so uh, try to fix the lens upright in the lens holder using plasticing because sometimes the place uh, the lens holder right might be too big for the lens so the lens might be a bit uh, slanting or uh, like facing downwards okay so you should always make sure your lens is upright so you can use a uh, plasticing to secure it okay make sure it's vertically upright and then also try to align the object uh, at the same level as the center of the lens. Okay, sometimes your object, the object that gives out, uh, gives out light, uh, might be a bit higher than the lens. Okay, then you won't get an image on the screen. So try to lower your uh object until it's the same level as the center of the lens. Okay, everything must be aligned. Okay, the object to the center of the lens, then you will see a clearer image. Okay, so it's easier for you to measure. Okay, so this is for light. Last one. Electricity and magnetism. So, one of the easiest one for electricity and magnetism circuit. Okay, so electricity, right? So the connection between uh, electrical components and wires are loose. Okay, sometimes if you didn't connect properly, uh, uh the connection might be a bit loose, or sometimes the use uh, battery use is not ideal and has some internal resistance. Okay, usually is ignore it. Uh, ignore. But um, in practical, sometimes. The resistance of the battery might have a significant impact on the reading itself. Okay, so make sure you tighten all electrical connection before you even start taking your first reading. 
Okay, so make sure the connection is uh, uh is all tight from like the wire to the resistor or from the wire to your voltmeter or ammeter or even to the battery. Make sure it's really uh there's a phys uh physical metal to metal connection. Okay, not just loosely connected. Uh, then next one when you use resistant wire, so this one you all should be very familiar with it. Okay, so you have some experience with this. So the jockey. Okay, some students will press right? the jockey press too hard onto the resistant wire. Okay, so you should try to what? apply equal pressure when using the jockey on the resistant wire. You do not want to deform the cross sectional area of the resistant wire because what you learn in theory, if the cross sectional area is uh changed, the resistance of the wire will be affected. So remember the formula R equals to rho L over A. Okay, so your area will affect the resistance of the wire. Okay, next is on the resistant wire. Next basically means like there's a Small bends or small bumps means the resistance wire is not parallel on the meter rule. Okay, so or sometimes the cross sectional area of the resistance wire is not uniform. So if that's the case, right, you should try to ask the lab technician to replace your wire. Or if there's nicks, right, you try to press it or straighten the resistance wire before the start of the experiment. You want to ensure that your resistance wire is completely flat on the meter rule. Okay, because that will affect your reading. And of course, this one's very, very important. The resistant wire gets heat up during the experiment. Okay, so ideally, because you know that from your theory, if the re temperature increase, right, the resistance will increase accordingly. Okay, under your Ohm's law. So ideally, you should switch off the circuit after a reading is taken. So whenever you place the jockey and you see your, you read off the reading from your voltmeter and ammeter, right? Okay, the before you even record down onto your paper. You should switch off first. Okay, you do not want to overheat. You do not want the current to be continue flowing in the circuit while you are writing down the value in your uh full scale paper or exam papers. Okay, so that's it. Okay.